show. Chris, what's what's going on tonight, and what can you say about the show here? Uh, we're having a we're having a show. Uh, Boston Hassle and Buys the Wire Shows is putting on um, one of our many shows here. Cool. Could you tell us something about the bands that are playing tonight? Yeah, we got uh, Chester, Endersby, Guizada, um Outer Spaces from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then locals Ronnie Nordak and Ackroyd. So Wes, what could you possibly say for, about the JP music scene or music experience here? How do you like performing here and what could you kind of say about the overall community of musicians and artists? Seems to be about people just making the kind of music they want to make and not necessarily aligning based on like genre or style so you, you go to a show and like everything is kind of different what's up guys um and that's what's kind of cool about it like people seem to respond more to like whether what you're doing seems genuine you know what i mean and not whether it sounds like one thing or another so like on the one hand i feel like maybe like there isn't like a sound you can associate with Boston, but on the other hand, I think it sort of frees you up and you can just do what you want to do. How are you guys expressing your sort of individuality? There's like recorded music, and there's live music. And so with this band, you know, I just play guitar, so I kind of want to just be as interesting and creative and as good for the band as I can be. Um, so, you know, I practice and I work on my licks and then we try to just make it work with the band. What are some of your major influences? Um, I don't know, these days, a lot of Boston music. I just moved to the White House a couple months ago, so it's really affected me just seeing kids kind of living it. Like, they're not really thinking beyond just doing their thing. You know, which means like playing shows and making records and stuff, but it's more like for the community. It's all about like engaging with the community. Hanging out here with Chris, how are you guys bringing the people in and getting them to continue coming? Uh, it seems like uh, you're all over the place and doing a lot of things. Uh, what are some of those strategies? What are, I guess, the aspirations for uh, Boston Hassle? Growing up, coming out here, uh, there were a lot of bands, nationally renowned bands, that would just skip Boston all the time because there wasn't very much of a, a strong uh, local scene or, or a lot of good venues for, um, you know, kind of alternative national bands to kind of come through and afford to play a show. So we try and offer alternative spaces for bands that are couldn't afford to play the Paradise, for instance, and pay that kind of cover. Um, and we're trying to offer something that, as much as possible, uh, is all ages and is open to everybody. And we just believe that uh, the bands that we pick and the music that we promote, uh, we believe is good and that you know people should know about it and that people will like it if we put it out there. How long have you guys been doing this? Uh, we've been putting on shows uh, as an organization for like 10 years. Um, I'm only, only under the name Boston Hassle for the last year or so. Uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff. We do the Compass, we do um, the, uh, the website, the Boston Hassle. We talk about shows happening all the time and we, we promote shows, we make shows, we try and provide something for the local scene. Part of an organization, absolutely. Uh, and the organization is called Boston Hassle. The Boston Hassle uh, uh, is an organization made of three components the Boston Hassle website, the Boston Compass newspaper, and uh, Boston Hassle shows. And uh, we are an organization, and we are in the midst of um, applying for nonprofit status uh, because uh, we would like to have longevity uh, and we would like to get some funding because. Uh, Money will make better things happen uh, for us in the city. You, you, you heard of God? I don't think God likes, likes what's going on. And I consider him an outside force. And uh, I was very skeptical about the police cracking down in a major way on so many venues all across the city. 
However, I have personally experienced um, fake accounts on Facebook um, trying to access information about shows, which is very sketchy. It's just, it's a part of culture that is necessary to foster artistic development. I make, I make music like sitting, you know, like sitting around and just like, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh my God, people do that. This is a Peter Negro Ponte. Live in Alston. I love JP though. I lived here for two years before I moved to uh, the Gay Gardens. Rest in peace. Play drums in Gorilla Toss. What do you think about the uh, sort of music experience in Jamaica playing? JP music is fantastic. You got the White House and pretty much uh, the White House. They're, they're, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't for the White House, I would have never found myself in this beautiful scene. JP seems to have their, their shit together more so than Alston, so. Now you got uh, the White House. It used to be the mothership. That was a cool joint. That was a great spot. I'm, I'm actually opening a record store on uh, South Street, Deep Thoughts JP. Everyone should go there. It's going to be the sickest place ever. You should go hang out. It's very skeptical about the whole outside forces, about um, the infringement and the interests of the police. Because uh, like I said, I, I'm an old man of the scene. Like I, I've been through cycles of like the cops getting interested, shutting places down. Um, it was very severe this time, uh, especially in Alston, a little bit in JP here. Deal with the bullshit of, of crackdowns. I mean, th for instance, the show we're at, this is an illegal show uh, in the eyes of the law. Um, so, you know, they could come and shut this down and it would be within their right. Um, so we want to open a space where that's not an option for the police. Yeah.